Now, Jimmy Turk Torello, boss of the Chicago outfit back in the day, and his underboss, Joe Ferriola, they were laying down the law. Every single burglar, thief, loan shark, drug dealer was going to start paying street tax, and the ones that were already paying were going to get an increase. Um, Joe Ferriola and Andrew LaPetria set up a meeting and asked Butchie Petroselli to stop by Angelo's club. Now, Butch Petroselli was born and raised on Taylor Street, right there in the patch. And over the years, uh, he became a top enforcer for the Chicago outfit. He also did a few unsanctioned hits. And he was robbing people without certain approval. That's another reason I think they killed him. And shortly after they found his body in the backseat of his car, three of his top guys in his crew went missing. Now, here's the leader of the infamous Wild Bunch, Butch Petroselli, reported to Harry Alleman. And uh, when Harry Alleman uh, went to jail, he was a little concerned why Butchie didn't go to jail as well. Um, regardless, Butchie took over uh, Harry Alleman's collections. A lot of that money went missing. And some of that money was supposed to go to his family, and it never got to Harry's family. Nick sat there calmly in his great uh, sweatsuit, never once looking over at his brother, Frank, who was glaring at him. And he testified in great detail how once uh, Butch Petroselli got to the club, Angelo told him, go take out the garbage. He went next door where he was jumped. Frank Sr. threw a rope around his neck. He was stabbed repeatedly. And then Sr. slit his throat from ear to ear. Now, during the family secret show, it was quite obvious that Frank Calabri Sr., he hated Butch Petroselli. They had beef that goes way back, and he pleaded with Angelo the Hook several times that he was no good, that they needed to get rid of him ASAP. So when they finally got the word, Frank Calabri took great pleasure in giving him the Calabri's necktie. Now, according to Frank Calabrese and his brother Nick Calabrese, there were several reasons why the outfit bosses wanted to kill uh, Butch Petroselli. And one of them was that when him and Harry got pinched, Harry was the only one that went to jail. So that, that raised some suspicion there. And Butchie took over ha Harry Allen's collections, and a lot of that money went missing. Plus, there was money that was supposed to go to Harry Allen's family that disappeared. Now, Chicago's very own legendary reporter, John Bulldog Drummond. Nobody knows more about the Chicago outfit than this man. I've seen him several times at the Dirksen Federal Building. Very well liked and respected by all the judges, all the lawyers, and even most of the outfit guys. Uh, he was in Joliet at a coffee shop 20 minutes before Bill Dahmer was killed. And he said that he saw Butch Petrosali and some of the guys at the same coffee shop. Now, Butchie and the Wild Bunch participated in a lot of murders for the outfit. They would do it New York style, very brazen, ski masks, shotguns, broad daylight, witnesses, right? Up front, in your face type murders. And two of the murders discussed at the Family Secret Trial were the Daubers. This is where the Chinatown crew worked with the Wild Bunch crew, and they killed Dauber and his wife. Uh, they chased him down in the car and shotgun blasted him to death. Now, Butchie clipped a lot of guys. Here's one guy, Frank Salino, out in Rockford. He was killed three weeks prior to testifying in front of the grand jury. He shotgun blast Chris Cardi, Tony uh, Riddiger, uh, Sam Sassino, and a very popular restaurant owner named Nick. Some of the Alpha guys actually loved the restaurant owner, and they were very upset that he killed them without their permission. Now, Butchie and Borsellino, they had beef. And they said to the Family Secrets trial that some nights, Butchie would go, go down the rush street with a whole crew of his guys, whining, dining, women, gambling, living it up this lavish lifestyle, right? Borsellino would find out about it. He'd go down the rush street the next night with an even bigger crew. They were going back and forth, constantly trying to outdo each other, causing unwanted attention, making the outfit bosses live it. Here's the late Anthony Borsellino. Uh, 
him and Butch Petroselli were close friends back in the day. They were both part of the uh, Wild Bunch crew. They did a lot of scores, a lot of heavy work together, but they also had beef. And there was some uh, a lot of money missing during Hearing Elements collections. Butchie was blaming Tony for the missing money, and Tony was blaming Butchie. And eventually, the outfit bosses had enough. Now here you got two good fellas on the left there, World War II veteran, uh, Rocky and Felice. Uh, he ended up dying in prison after the lollipop conviction. And on the right, uh, Butchie Pesticelli, uh made guy in the uh, Wild Bunch crew. Uh, one of the reasons um, they killed Butchie was that he owed John Nonos de Franzo and Rocky and Felice hundreds of thousands of dollars, and he kept ducking them. Now, here's a very dangerous individual here when he's out on the street. Boss of the Chinatown crew, Angelo Petria. He was talked about a lot at the Family Secret trial. And Frank Calabri Sr. said he was the only one that was able to look Angelo in the eyes. Nobody else could even look him in the eye. They were so nervous and intimidated by him. But the hook uh, is the one that actually set up Butchie to be killed at the club. Now, on December 30th, 1980, Joe Ferriola and Angela Lepetria called Butchie into a meeting. Uh, he was lured to a club right down the street from Angela Lepetria's house. Nick Calfreeze testified that Angela told him, go next door and take out the garbage. And what that meant was, go next door and help those guys kill Butchie Petroselli. Now, here's a nice before and after photo of Butchie. And prior to the Family Secrets trial, uh, they, they said that Butchie's face was blowtorched. But Nick sat there calmly and went into great detail on exactly what happened. After uh, he was jumped at the club, Frank Calabrese threw a, a rope around his neck, strangled him, slit his throat. Nick went to burn the car, but he forgot to roll down the windows. Now, here's some of the men from the notorious Chinatown crew that were responsible for killing Butch Petricelli. Obviously, you have Angelo Lepetri, the hook, the boss of the Chinatown crew, Frank Calabrese Sr., his brother Nick Calabrese, Frank Santucci, and Jimmy the Lapper Lepetria, and Andy, Angelo's younger brother. These are some of the men that took part in killing Butchie. Now, Butchie's body wasn't found until two months after the murder. It was found in the back seat of his old Ford in a sleeping bag. There was burn marks on his face, on his body. He had multiple stab wounds. And his throat was slit from ear to ear by that famous Calabrese necktie. Now, here's a little sketch of some of the uh, members of the Wild Bunch crew. Uh, you got uh, Harry Alleman, the leader of the crew. He ended up dying in prison. You got uh, Scarpelli there to his right. He ended up getting killed in the MCC. Then you got Jimmy I. He's alive and doing well. Little Tony Borsalino was killed. Butchie Petroselli was killed. And Scalise is still locked up. Now, like a lot of outfit guys that moved out of the patches in the city, they moved out to the western suburbs. This is one of Butchie Petroselli's homes in Hillside, Illinois, which is about 20 minutes, 30 minutes outside of downtown Chicago. Uh, I know Butchie also has a home that they shown at the Family Secrets trial uh, up in Lake Geneva, not too far from uh, the Abbey Springs Resort. 